So um, to make basket setting, the first thing we need is the jump ring. But how big the jump ring um, is the set the stone. So for example, I have two stone with the exact same size. But if you want to set it low, the basket is going to be this big. But if you want to set it high, the basket is going to be a lot smaller than this one. Um, so, and then we need to pick the wire for 4 to 6 millimeter stone, 18 gauge wire is going to be the best. Um, for larger stone, 16 gauge wire is recommend. Okay, I come up with a method that ha that give up give us a rough idea how big the jump ring should we make. I have here a five millimeter Alexandra, and we kind of measure the diameter by multiply the perimeter by pi. So, 5 multiplied by 3.14 is equal 15.7. Gonna round it down to 15. So, and then I'm gonna cut a piece of paper that is the size of the perimeter of the stone. It's gonna be this big and please take um, the thickness of the wire to consider so we need it to be a little bit smaller so I'm gonna mark the perimeter on my round and then So it's going to be roughly it's going to be roughly around here. So I'm going to make a jump ring. I'm going to show you how to make a perfect jump ring. So line up on where it needs to be and do a loop and then rotate my flyer and do a half loop so you can see this is what I have and I'm gonna cut right when two Y meet right here And all I need to do is just that's why I mark it on my flyer but not on my wire because you can use this method um, using a, a, a piece of wire that is already cut out. We have our drum ring. Our first jump. Now that we have our first jump ring, we're gonna test it. See if the stone sits ni nicely on it. After we got the jump ring, so now we need to mark where uh, do we need to have our prawns. The easiest way is put a cross on the paper, put the jump ring on top. Now we know exactly where the prawn should be. So I'm gonna mark it. And then I'm going to use a saw blade to start the guy. The reason why I didn't go with the fire, because you can see um, the fire is easy to slip and slide because the wire is round. So by cutting, cutting a guy in line with a saw blade, it makes it easier to make a straight line with a fire. We're gonna use the triangle fire first and then we're gonna round it up with a joint fire. A joint fire is 
basically a flat fire with tea uh, on the side. So this is what the joint fire look like. Look like that from above. I don't have a joint file, so I'm gonna use the round file. And basically, we wanna cut it like this so it fit nicely with the prawns. Okay, the next step it bends a piece of wire. So we can make the first two prongs. Again, I'm going to use my round fire and go like that. Okay, there you have it. I'm going to cut it out. Now you have the jum ring and the prawns. We're gonna solder the small jum ring first. So I have my piece of wire, I have my jum ring, and I'm gonna hold my wire with the second hand use it at the heat sink because the wire is so thin so it's very easy to melt if you're not careful so we hold it on this side we're gonna work on this side gonna place a piece of solder on the inside and then we're gonna come up with heat then we come the heat from below and then wait until the solder melt, we're gonna heat it directly on the seam. Okay, so another trick that I learned that you can make uh, sure that the jump ring at level is to hold it against something that you know is it's the straight line. So for example, I know that line, the white line right there straight. So I'm gonna compare my jump ring to that line to make sure it's level. Another thing that I can do is um, I'm gonna file a little bit on my prongs, not a lot, but just enough so it will, the jump ring will catch it nicely and sit nicely on it. So. I, and after I solder one side, I'm gonna make sure that it's straight and then solder the other side. So this is what I got after I soldered the small jump ring into my first prongs. Gonna flip it upside down and uh, let the, um, I'm gonna sand down the prongs, make sure that it's flat it also help would make the jump uh, the jump ring stay level. So I'm gonna come in with the second set of wire. Put the piece of solder in the inside, and then I'm gonna come in with wire uh, with fire, trying to avoid uh, heat it up from the top or the bottom because you can easily melt it. Right, so after after I'm done with solder, this is what I have. And I'm gonna file the largest jump ring just like the small one and repeat the process. I'm gonna solder the two of the opposite bronze first, and then gonna flip it over and solder the other two. So after we're done, 
with soldering, uh, we're gonna cut off the extra, which is this part. So this is what I have after I solder the larger jump ring on top. Um, I used the, the paper with too thick so I couldn't cut it, so pretend that you don't see this part. And this is my uh, 100 carat diamond that I bought for this demonstration. You can see it fit very nicely on top. So this is what it should look like. Um, the bigger jump ring shouldn't cover the girdle of the stone. This is from the front side. And the rest is very similar to bronze setting. So you're gonna come in and cut no more than one third of the bronze. So we're gonna come in with a chain nose flyer to bend the bronze over to hold the stone, uh, the stone in place. So just like the bronze setting, we're gonna have one side at the bottom and the other side we use it to push it over like that and then we're gonna go to the opposite side so we're gonna bend it like that switch side go to the opposite and then we're gonna use uh, the bronze pusher to finish the rest